on the Valley today. A dangerous situation in a South Moorhead neighborhood ends peacefully after five people were taken into custody with a standoff with law enforcement. And a deadly pipeline explosion in Alabama under investigation this morning. Well, a gas fire is still raging. And after yesterday's 70 degree temperatures, today might be a little bit of a struggle, but it's still looking pretty nice. We'll have the details on your forecast for your Tuesday. Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online and on the go. This is the Valley Today on Fargo CW. Hi everyone, thanks for waking up with us. It's just after 7 a.m. here on the Fargo CW. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch. We're following breaking news this morning. Police are looking for a burglary suspect who was spotted early this morning in South Moorhead. Officers got a call about that burglary in progress in the 3200 block of 12th Street South just after 5 a.m. Now we did speak with the police sergeant not too long ago who says that the homeowner did chase the guy for a while but couldn't catch him. Police eventually did set up a perimeter in that area and held a canine search, but so far have come up empty. We're also following a developing story out of Moorhead this morning. We are expecting to find out more details today about a Halloween night standoff that locked down a south side neighborhood for several hours. Five people were eventually taken into custody after negotiations with SWAT team members ended that situation peacefully. The street crimes unit and U.S. Marshals were trying to arrest a man who had a felony warrant, but threatened officers and barricade himself in a home for about four hours. The neighborhood was evacuated and people were asked to avoid the area. Yeah, it's a little bit frightening, frightening. Uh, to know that... What's been more th uh, frightening, though, is living next to this element. Yeah. There have been a number of times when I've been concerned about what might be going on over there. And uh, so I'm grateful to know that this is probably going to be the end of whatever is happening there. It's unclear if all five people arrested will face charges. Police say they appreciate the cooperation and patience from everyone in the neighborhood during what could have been a much more dangerous situation. Well, with yesterday's standoff in Moorhead, many kids and parents who were lived there had to miss out on a full night of trick-or-treating. Families say that they were still out and about, but in the area surrounding that standoff, some people weren't allowed to go home until around 8 last night. But they still managed to have some fun and eat some delicious candy, despite the dangerous situation just blocks away. Some people living in the neighborhood also say they will extend the holiday to today for trick-or-treaters who may have missed out on the fun. Also developing for you this morning, police in Park Rapids, Minnesota, are investigating a report of a man whose two daughters say a homeowner answered his door naked while they were out trick-or-treating. The incident allegedly happened around 6.30 last night on Riverside Avenue in Park Rapids. Police say they can't f confirm yet if the man was actually naked, but the father who called Valley News Live says his wife was with the girls at the time and that when the girls saw the man they screamed and ran away. The girls are between the ages of 5 and 13. Well time now to get a first check of our weather on Fargo CW this morning. Meteorologist Lisa Green joins us and it certainly was quite the treat for many of the trick-or-treaters who were out last night. Yeah we had 70 degrees in several spots yesterday afternoon in the Southern Valley. It was really quite nice. And Lisa was talking about you were out with your girls and you didn't have to wear those layers. It was really great to be outdoors. And we're looking at uh, some mild temperatures today, just not quite where we were. 70 degrees your high yesterday in Fargo, 72 in Wheaton and in Gwinter. Up north, some 40s there, so it wasn't quite nice. As nice, I should say, up along the international border. This, by the way, is closer to our average for this time of year, so it's not like you were freezing. It's just when you see those 70s in the Southern Valley and know, knowing you missed out on it, that can be kind of tough. Also, the cloud cover and the rain showers stuck around there throughout the evening hours last night and this morning. Still some sprinkles in northwestern parts of Minnesota. That will be winding down through the morning. Temperatures upper 30s to some mid 40s right now. So not bad as you step out the door. You'll need that coat, but it won't be too cold. 44 degrees in Fargo and in Grand Forks. The wind is out of the west, becoming a little more northwesterly. And a couple of places where we've been seeing some gusts into the teens to near 20 miles per hour. But that is 
uh, winding down here this morning. Here's a look at those afternoon highs for today. We're right at average or even well above that, just not quite where we were yesterday. So some mid to some upper 40s up north and east, and then the rest of us into the 50s, even some upper 50s in the south for today. Depending on where you are, you'll get to see some sunshine. We're looking at more sun down in southeastern North Dakota. Cloud cover just kind of hanging on up into the northeastern part of our viewing area up around Lake of the Woods. So another gloomy one for you, but tomorrow we're looking better up in the northern valley. We'll get to see some sunshine. So mid to upper 50s for the next couple of days and we continue that warm mild trend into the end of the week by the way our average high is in the upper 40s for this week so we are doing pretty good with temperatures hitting 60 degrees by Friday and this weekend looks great don't forget to turn your clocks back so we're getting temperatures in the 60s and an extra hour of sleep Saturday night we've got some good stuff coming our way yeah no kidding thank you Lisa and developing this morning, investigators are trying to figure out what caused a massive gas explosion in rural Alabama yesterday. It led to the death of one worker and several others were left hurt. Flames and smoke filled the air following the blast along the Colonial Pipeline in Shelby. Yeah, it's the same line that leaked thousands of gallons of gasoline last month. The pipeline company that supplies one-third of the East Coast gas every day has now had to shut down two of its main gas lines because of issues. In our election 2016 coverage this morning, one week to election day, and Hillary Clinton and her supporters are fighting back against the FBI's decision to examine thousands of emails possibly connected to Clinton's email controversy. Many are accusing FBI Director James Comey of a blatant double standard for announcing the renewal of the email probe, but staying silent about possible Russian interference in the U.S. election. Donald Trump continued to hammer Clinton on the FBI's decision yesterday, saying her administration would be crippled by criminal charges. Well, even with controversy seeming to pop up daily, tens of millions of Americans have already cast their ballots around the country, and that now includes thousands of voters who have cast their ballots here in the Valley. You can see people packed into the Baymont Inn and Suites in Fargo yesterday, one of the early voting locations that is now open. Others include the Fargo Dome and the Cambria Suites in West Fargo. The Days Inn in Castleton will be open for early voting starting tomorrow. Those polls are open 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. through Friday. And as a reminder, any eligible Cass County voter can go to any of these early voting locations to cast their ballot. Well, new for you this morning, a Grand Forks man is facing several charges after an overnight crash. Police were called out to the 900 block of Walnut Street just before 1030 last night. Officers say 19-year-old Elliot Blue of Grand Forks was driving south on Walnut Street when he lost control of his car and hit a parked SUV, leaving himself and his three passengers hurt. Blue now faces charges of reckless endangerment, possession of marijuana, and possession of drug paraphernalia. He also had two active warrants in the Grand Forks area. Here's the latest in the battle over the Dakota Access Pipeline project. The cost keeps rising for North Dakota law enforcement. And the State Emergency Commission will meet today to address money issues related to the protests. A spokesperson for Governor Jack Dalrymple's office says the commission will consider authorizing an additional $4 million to help with law enforcement efforts at the protest site. The state has already gone through the nearly $6 million the commission authorized in September. Well, a woman who was protesting at the pipeline site is now facing a charge of attempted murder of a police officer. Investigators say 37-year-old Red Fawn Fallis fired three shots at police last Thursday and refused to give up her gun. It all happened while law enforcement was trying to remove protesters from private land. The charge carries a potential of up to 20 years in jail. And after more than 140 arrests of protesters last Thursday, police are dealing with a space crunch in their jails. Temporary holding cells are now being used by the Morton County Sheriff's Department to hold protesters. Some of those protesters say the holding cells are comparable to a dog kennel and are dehumanizing. Officials say the chain link fences are only used for mass arrest situations and people are only held there until they are processed into their facility or transferred to another jail. They have been inspected and approved by the North Dakota Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. A Fargo teenager is headed to prison for 12 years for his attack on a woman outside the West Acres Mall. Abdi Rahman Sahil was sentenced for robbery, terrorizing, simple assault, and criminal contempt. He was 15 years old at the time of the attack, but his case was a move to adult court. The victim was walking to her car when a seal attacked her in the parking lot with a gun. 
Now, he was given credit for the nearly two years that he has already served behind bars. A second man has been sentenced in the beating death of a Fargo man outside of Rick's bar in May of last year. Jesse Olson was sentenced to 20 years in prison yesterday for criminal conspiracy and being an accomplice in the death of Joey Garsland. Olson is the second man to be sentenced to 20 years for his involvement in Garsland's death. Two others in the case are still awaiting their sentencing. Police are searching for several people suspected in an assault outside a Crookston, Minnesota bar. Witnesses told police that 31-year-old Joshua Schill was beaten up by a number of men at Crook's nightclub early Sunday morning. Police say that Schill was treated for head and face injuries, but has been unable to give police any information about his attackers so far. Anyone who might have any information is asked to call Crookston police. Never mind meetings stuck in the conference room. Some smart bosses are taking their people for walk and talks. That story is coming up next on The Valley Today.